Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power x equals 91 to the power x divided by 3. And we're going to be solving for x values. We're going to be looking at real values, but are there any complex solutions, non-real solutions? That's for you to find out. Okay, let's dive in. So exponential equations are generally easy to solve if you have a same base and if it's usually a single expression. When we have a sum, there is no way to simplify it unless the bases and the exponents are the same. In this case, we have different bases. The exponents are somewhat similar, so they all contain x. So in general, we can kind of write these types of exponential equations as a to the power x plus b to the power x equals c to the power x, where a, b, c are the bases, right? And when the bases are different and they're not related like 2 and 4 or 4 and 8 or 9 and 27, then there's no way for us to simplify this any further because we can't combine 3 to the x plus 4 to the x. And if you're saying, okay, if I add the bases, I get 7 to the power x. No, that's not true in general. But guess what? That's another example of an exponential equation whose solution is fairly easy to find because you probably know this, right? x equals 1 is a solution. And it is the only solution. Why? Because... No other value satisfies it. But of course, that's not the reason. Uh, because if you divide everything by 7, you get 3 over 7 to the power x plus 4 over 7 to the power x equals 1. And you probably know, hopefully, that 3 over 7 plus 4 over 7 equal, is equal to 1. So that means x equals 1 is a valid solution. x equals 1 is valid. And there's no other solution because this is a decreasing function. This is a decreasing function. And the sum of the two decreasing functions is also decreasing because remember, uh, its derivative is negative. So two negatives will make a negative. And right-hand side is a constant. So a decreasing function can only intersect a constant or horizontal line at a single point. Same thing goes for an increasing function. But if a function is increasing and decreasing, then you never know what's going to happen because it might intersect at more than one point, right? Great. So... This is a very fairly easy example. Or if you have something like 3 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 5 to the x, you're probably aware of Pythagorean theorem, right? I hope so. Unless you're uh, like in fifth, fifth or sixth grade, which you may not know. But a lot of people who watch videos on my channel are pretty knowledgeable and they are definitely way more advanced than their peers. And some of them are even professors, which I'm very humbled with. So x equals 2 is a solution because 9 plus 16 is 25. You get the idea? So there are some fairly easy ones like you can guess and check. What about this one? Hmm. Interestingly, uh, we can also guess and check on this one. But to make it a little easier, let's do something good. So let me go ahead and rewrite this equation. We're going to put it in a nicer form because that x over 3 kind of bothers me. Doesn't that bother you too? Because that's a fraction. Who likes fractions? Nobody, right? Okay, if you like fractions, go ahead and write down in the comment section down below. I'll be pretty surprised. But anyways, so since x over 3 is a fraction, I want to get rid of it. And the best way to get rid of a fraction, of course, you can cube both sides, but I don't think that's going to do anything good. Maybe it will, who knows. But I will do something else. So to change that uh, to a non-fraction, I'm going to set x over 3 equal to something. How about you? Good. Now, this tells us that, okay, x equals 3u. 2u would be better, but it's okay. We'll do with that. So now you can replace x with 3u. So you'll get 3 to the power 3u plus 4 to the power 3u equals 91 to the power u because x over 3 is u, right? Now, notice that we don't have any fractions anymore. Moreover, we have some nice exponentials that we can simplify. How? a to the power b to the power c is a to the power bc. Of course, a to the power c to the power b is also a to the power bc because it's a to the power cb. And bc equals cb. Of course, we're talking about normal multiplication, right? We're not talking about any multiplication operation in any ring. Okay, that's a different story. But if you have the commutative property of multiplication, yes, this holds. So what does that mean? It means a to the bc can be turned into that. 
So 3 to the power 3u can be written as 3 to the power 3 to the power u. And this can be written as 4 to the power 3 to the power u. And this is already 91 to the power u. <laughs> it's all about u, right? <laughs> of course. What is 3 to the third power? 27. You knew that, right? 27 to the power u. And this is 64 to the power u. And that's equal to 91 to the power u. What is so significant about this method? Well, the very fact that 27 plus 64 is equal to 91. Uh-oh, that's interesting. That means u equals 1, right? Of course, u equals 1. That doesn't mean x equals 1. It just means something else. If u is equal to 1, what is x? Well, what is u? <laughs> what are you? Who are you? So u is x over 3 based on this, right? So I can go and replace u with x over 3, and that gives me x over 3 equals 1, and that gives me x equals 3. Uh-oh. That's what I meant when I said you could probably guess and check. But guess what? <laughs> that would be a little harder, right? Of course, 3 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 5 to the x or 7 to the x. Those are easy to guess because right away you can see right away, right? Hopefully. If you know a basic fact that 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. But in this case, it's a little hidden. That's why I like this problem. And we could call this a homemade problem because I thought about this idea. But anyone can think about this idea, right? Obviously. Well, we could also write this equation a little differently. Like how? I could write this as the cube root of 91 to the power x. Would that be more interesting? I don't know. I just didn't like it. And do you write a radical to the power x like that? Or do you use parentheses? And if you use parentheses, that's too many symbols. That's too crowded. I don't like that because I want my thumbnails to be simple and easy to read, right? Of course, who doesn't? I mean, none of the YouTubers, right? Obviously. So does that help a little bit? Mm, maybe. The fact that we have the cube root might kind of uh, guide you in the right direction. Like, okay, what happens again Curiosity is important, right? It killed the cat, but it's going to help if you're solving math problems and try, trying to learn new things. Yes, cubing will help because, first of all, it's going to give us an integer here. And on the left-hand side, we're going to be adding two cubes. And guess what? When we do, we get 91. You see? That's how this problem came about. But notice that with substitution, it becomes much, much, much much nicer. I can tell you enough how much nicer it's going to get. So x equals 3 is a solution and that is the only solution. Let's go ahead and check uh, the graph from Wolfram Alpha which also verifies that there is a single intersection point at x equals 3. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to watch A plus PI. And I hope you got the new schedule, which I posted on community. And bye-bye.